Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries. Uh, I hope you're all doing great. You're doing well. You're staying safe out there. Uh, I hope everything's going great on your preparations, on getting your boat ready. As you know, the last word I released was the boat um, has left the dock. So, but you need to know, we still continue to get prepared and be ready and be listening. And if you've seen the last video I released on the prophetic dream that I had about the window, get your window repaired. Go back and watch that video. And that is a warning for the body of Christ. And um, today I'm going to be releasing another prophetic dream. This is not necessarily a warning, but this is a prophetic dream and a word uh, for the church as a whole and the body of Christ. But it is a times and seasons prophecy about what God's doing. Uh, if you've been following my ministry at all, you will know that I will release personal prophetic words like I'm lifting the load or, you know, uh, fears attacking the body of Christ. And then we pray about fear being removed. And then I'll release prophecy, which is over, which is times and seasons words that are about the body of Christ, um, the church as a whole, the world as a whole, what God is doing and what we need to be doing to prepare. And then I will release words that are uh, more geared towards just helping you to understand what God's doing right now, not necessarily a warning, not necessarily um, anything to get you prepared necessarily. So I, there's several different ways that I will release words that God gives me, different types of words. And um, the last dream I, was, I released was more of a warning uh, for the body of Christ, but today I'm going to release a prophecy that is about the body of Christ, about what God is going to be doing in this next season. And you're probably thinking, man, there is so much he's already doing. How much more can he possibly do to me? Well, it's not all about you. We want it to be, okay? But we, we are a body. All of us matter. And so God has to do a mighty work because we're all included in that. And yes, it's going to, we're going to feel it. And so... If you have not, go back, watch the words that I released, uh, the faulty foundation, the wheat and the tares, the de-wrinkle, the, the dream I had about the de-wrinkle cycle, God's de-wrinkling the church, bring, bringing life back, fluffing it up, um, dead dry bones, prophecy about the body of Christ and the lack of the spirit moving in the, in the body. And so he's changing all those things. And so there's several words I've released. You can go back and watch them. Um, but today, uh, this is another word about what God is doing in the body of Christ. And it's so cool how God gives me so many different variations. And I will not release it until he tells me. And so today, the prophetic dream that he gave me, it was very simple and very short. But man, it was powerful and it spoke volumes. So he gave me this dream on August 27th. Okay, so I know that's been a while. August 27th. But what you need to understand is, as I've said before, I release it when he tells me to. Now, if he gives me a dream and he has, no, has not given me any scriptures yet necessarily in my heart or mind to back it up that I can really find, uh, I don't really search it out. I wait for him to lead me. And so if he hasn't led me to the verses that um, I know will connect the dots with that word, then I wait for him. And so he gave me this dream on the 27th, and then it was just three days ago that he gave me the verse to go with it and said, now you have the go ahead to release it. And when he gave me the verse, it was like, boom, wow. So here's the dream. And this is what the word is that's the prophecy that goes with the dream today. And that is, he said, I'm removing the honeycomb. I'm removing the honeycomb. And some of you are already going to start tracking with what I'm saying here. I'm removing the honeycomb. So here's the dream that I had. I was somewhere. I don't even know where I was. Uh, but the dream was not about me. And so what you have to understand with prophetic dreams is, it is if it's not about me 100% and about my life and family, I will know the difference. And I will know it's for the body of Christ. It's for the world or whatever. And so... In this dream, I'm there, and I look over, and there, standing just around outside in the grass, are little toddlers. They're like three or four years old children. 
and they are sitting there with huge pieces of honeycomb, like bigger than their body. And they're holding them with their arms. They're holding these big pieces of, of you can't see my arms, these big pieces of, of honeycomb, big, okay, big pieces of honeycomb, giant pieces, and they're just chomping and eating them. And they're just sitting there eating these big, huge pieces of honeycomb. And as I'm sitting there, I'm looking at them and I'm like, in the dream, I see them and I'm thinking, who gave them all that honeycomb? They're just toddlers. They're just children. They should not be eating that much honey. That is not good. And in the dream, basically, they're just sitting there, literally filling themselves with honeycomb, these little toddlers. And then the dream ends. That's the whole dream. And so when I got up in the morning and I, in the middle of the night, I wrote it down and I went back to sleep. When I got up in the morning and I asked the Lord about it, he said, I'm removing my honeycomb or the honeycomb from my people, from the church, from the body of Christ. And I said, well, what is that? What do you, what do you mean? And he said, my people, the body of Christ have made themselves, they don't know it, but they have made themselves sick on honeycomb, which is the world. And he said, they, in the midst of all this, part of what's happening in these seasons to come, this is a prophecy for the body of Christ. And he said, B besides the de-wrinkling and the wreaths and the tears and the separation and all this work that he's doing, he said, I'm removing the honeycomb from my people. He said, they have gotten so full on the world, on, on everything that the devil has enticed them with. He has enticed them and they are just sitting there. And that's why in the dream, the honeycomb was huge. It was like bigger than the body of the toddler children. Like it was huge pieces of honeycomb. Way not acceptable, period. Not even in a lifetime. Too much to eat in a lifetime. And the Lord said, my people don't know it, but they are sick on honeycomb. And they have been sick for years. He said they switched from being the, the disciple type of, we're going to go. And there's many people that are faithful like this. The disciples, how they went out and they did not love their life unto, you know, unto death. They were, they were willing to die for what God was doing, to carry the glory and to go and to heal the sick and to save the lost and to spread the gospel. And he said, my church has become, my body has become uh, very worldly. And, and I don't always like to try to separate it like that because God loves everybody the same. You need to know that. He died for you. If you don't know him yet and you're, just, and you're watching this video, he died for you. He loves you. But this is a word for the body of Christ. And he said, so many of my people have so tried to be a part of the world, you're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And so that's what the Lord says in his word. We are to be in the world, but not of the world. We're supposed to think differently. We're supposed to react differently. We're supposed to spend our money differently. We're supposed to handle our lives differently. We're supposed to not watch the same junk on TV. And this is not a judgment, but we're, we're supposed to not bow to the idols of this world. And he said, my people have, have allowed themselves to become sick. They, they are sick on honeycomb. And he said, they want everything. They, they, the world wants everything to feel good, to taste good, and to be easy and comfortable. And he said, uh-uh, Christians are not supposed to live like that. They're supposed to know that, that, the fire comes, burns out your old sin, cleans you out. Deliverance is hard. Uh, growth is hard. God causes you to be uncomfortable and have uncomfortable seasons while he's growing you and teaching you. And he said, my people are sick on honeycomb. And he said the same way the world bases everything off of feelings. Feelings lie. He said, my body has become that way. They are addicted to honeycomb. They want everything to taste good, to feel good, to be comfortable and easy, which is why 
They went from being spirit-filled, crazy, running all over the earth, healing the sick in the streets, being on fire for God, and letting the Holy Spirit move to religion. Because they want to be comfortable. They want to have a building. They want to have a certain amount of people. They want to have a certain amount of tithe. And this is not a put down. Everyone should be tithing. I'm just going to put that out there. You need to be tithing to your church. Whether you can meet in person right now or not. Tithing is mandated. It's biblical. Okay, I'm going to move on from that. But you should be tithing. Tithes and offerings are biblical. And if we put God first, we will do that. But the thing is, is the body of Christ has become reliant on money. Money being comfortable. Here's the thing. I know that God has blessings for us all. He loves us. He wants us to have a decent roof over our head. He wants us to have a vehicle that runs. He wants to bless us. So don't get me wrong what I'm saying. I believe he wants us to be blessed, but not at that price. Our blessing has to come from him. We can't go act like the world and try to create a form of religion, a form of walking with Christ that is nothing but honeycomb. It's a lie of the devil. And it entices Christians and the body of Christ to be complacent and to lose their fire, if they ever even had the fire. Some people go into a church that is not even on fire and they get saved there Sadly, then they just get they just get taught how to become religious and comfortable and only hang around with people who are just like you. You know, Jesus didn't do that. He went out and hung out with sinners. And it wasn't he didn't go act like them. He was in the world but not of the world. He still was holy, pure, perfect, never sinned. But he went out to where the hurting people were and he loved them. And so he, the Lord was very clear. He said, I'm removing the honeycomb from my people. Because they need to stop relying on what the world relies on. They need to stop living that way. Because the thing is, I have not promised things will be easy. The disciples all died a martyr's death. And so the thing is, is, is... The body of Christ has wrapped their mind around acting just like the world does. Football schedule. Oh, can't miss my football games. Oh, you're going to stay home from church because it's Super Bowl? Oh, yeah, because, you know, this is what we do. Sorry, not against football. Actually, love it. All my boys played football. Okay? And I was there, and some of the time I was the cheer coach. You're probably going to think I'm evil for that. But here's the thing. I'm not against that. I'm not against the, the sports and the participation, but it cannot be your idol. And the Lord has said that he's removing the honeycomb from his people. We call ourselves the church, but we want to be comfortable like the world. We want everything to be sweet and not hard and fun. And I'm not trying I'm not trying to be, you know, a turkey about it at all, you guys. But here's the thing. I know some of you are going, "Man, I've went through some rough stuff. I know for sure I ain't sick on the honey." And so, I know some of you are not sick on the honey. That you know what it is. You've paid a price to serve Christ. And some of us have, but you also know that there's a side of the body of Christ that are very religious, complacent, and they have become reliant on what the world is reliant on. And I can only tell you what God has told me, the dream he gave me. The honeycomb was ginormous. And his children were just eating it like it was just sick. It was just sick. And so think about this very quickly. What is honeycomb? Okay, we all know what honeycomb is. It's where the, the honey is produced and it's dripping and it's on there and it's good. But you know what happens if you eat too much honeycomb? I always got to look stuff up when God tells me things like this because I'm a researcher. 
If you eat too much honeycomb, it's going to stop up your stomach. It's going to stop everything from moving. Now, the Lord said, because my people have been sick on honeycomb, there's a huge portion of my body that has not been moving. They have been, not been going forward. Their version of going forward is comfort, money, buildings, and people. Yes, we want to see people get saved, but we have to see it differently. That doesn't make us who we are. The blood of the cross makes us who we are. And so the Lord said, the same way if you eat honeycomb in real life, it will stop you up. It will wreck your gut. It will block you. It will block you. He said, it's the same way the body of Christ has been blocked because they have gorged themselves on honeycomb and I'm removing it. This season, I'm removing the honeycomb and they're going to learn to rely on me and they're going to stop trying to live the way the world lives and just throwing me in on a Sunday and a Wednesday. He said, they're going to have to turn to me with everything that they have. And they're going to have to lean on me. And they're going to have to know that I'm their God in this season. I'm removing the honeycomb. Now, as I said, he gave me a scripture to back it up. A couple weeks go by. I'm at Prayer Mountain. This was three days ago. He said, go to Psalm 19, 8 through 10. Let's read it. Let's read it. Psalm 19, 8 through 10. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous together, all together. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold and much fine silver. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. I threw the silver in there because silver and gold usually represents money. I'm not trying to change the word of God, so don't freak out. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. So basically, the Lord is saying here, the fear of God, his righteousness, his heart, his way is to be sweeter to us than anything that the devil and the world can offer. So the honeycomb represents the world that we, we have made ourselves sick, the body of Christ, and God is removing it. He said it's got to go because they have to see who I am as more important. They have to want it more than, than all the gold in the world. They have to want it more than any honey or honeycomb. They have to see my way, even if it leads to a martyr's death, is sweeter than anything that they can imagine. Because we receive a mighty inheritance When we can go forward and follow that and get rid of the honeycomb and stop trying to live the way the world, be meshed in with the world, try to do it the world's way, the world's wisdom, the world's comforts. God wants us to not be comfortable. I'm sorry. Living well and having what you need because you prepare for the seasons to come because a food shortage is coming. There's things that are coming that we have to be ready for. Go back, watch my words. I'm not going to go over those again. But that those things are coming. But you need to know we can live well, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be uncomfortable and have to totally rely on him. And he said, I'm getting my church back to where they will stop leaning on all that stuff. They will stop gorging themselves on honeycomb because the taste to the mouth is deceiving. Then they eat a bunch of it and they get all stopped up and then they are a lazy, complacent Christian who has no fire 
and has no plan to even go anywhere with it. They sit around criticizing and judging people and they become religious. And he said, I can't use those people. So he has to remove the honeycomb, like I said. He said, I have to get them to where they count on me for everything because it's that purity of heart that is gonna allow me to use them and they can be a part of what I'm doing. And I, that's where their strength is gonna come from is me removing the honeycomb. Okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pray for you. And we're gonna believe that God is gonna show us what our honeycomb is for our own personal life. What is it that we've relied on except for him? And then we're gonna repent and give it to him. That's between you and the Lord, but I'm gonna pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for every person watching this especially those that are, that are a part of the body of Christ. This prophecy is for them. Lord, I pray that you would reveal to them what the honeycomb is in their life, that they have gorged themselves on without knowing it. Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself mightily and that you would show them everything that they haven't been able to see because honeycomb is deceiving. Lord, I bind the spirit of deception and I command it to take its hands off of every person watching. And I release truth and clarity into their heart and mind that they would hear you and that they would know you and that you would reveal yourself in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And just know that honey is deceptive, but God's removing it. Let him remove it and trust him. Don't be all afraid with this. Just understand that God needs to take us all in a different direction. He doesn't want any of us going back to normal. And this dream was so powerful, you guys. And just like the verse says, we have to desire his righteousness, his, his judgments, and we have to fear him more than anything. Gold or honeycomb. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. See you later. Bye.